Okay, so we're going to talk about circular motion here, unit 3.1, circular motion. So what do we mean by circular motion? Well, quite simply, it is uh, the motion of an object that's going around in a circle. So we have this circle here. Obviously, the circle has got a certain radius r, and we've got some object here that is traveling around. Um, and we'll say that it's going this way, okay? So it's going that in that direction, okay? Um, and it's moving around. What we're going to assume during this topic is um, that the object is traveling at a constant speed. Okay, so an object in circular motion going around in a circle at a constant speed. All right. Now, perhaps the first thing to mention here is this: uh, if that object is traveling around at a constant speed in that direction, its velocity at that particular moment is a tangent to the circle so it will be something like that that would be its instantaneous velocity okay so we're defining some terms here its velocity is straight up like that it's traveling around with a certain velocity v okay and it also has what we call an angular velocity now the angular velocity is given the symbol omega and that represents the number of um, degrees or the angle through which the object travels per second okay so we've got linear velocity which is directed like that and angular velocity which is the angle through which this object travels every second okay so that's circular motion now there's a couple of things we need to define here first of all we've got the time period t the time period is uh, given by the symbol capital T and it's measured in seconds. This is the time for one whole, uh, for the time it takes the object to go around the circle once. Okay, so the time for one rotation. Then you have the frequency F, and this is the number of rotations per second. Okay, that's got the symbol F and the unit is Hertz. Okay, now the, the, there's a relationship between these two things. If the time period is T, then the frequency is 1 over the time period, okay? So the frequency in Hertz is 1 over the time period in seconds. So that's a really important um, concept to begin with. Now, the other thing with circular motion is we measure the angle... Uh, through which the object moves in radians, okay? Now, 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians. So, radians are measured in fractions of pi, usually, okay? You can put it as a decimal, but it's often quoted as fractions of pi. And 360 degrees, one whole rotation, is 2 pi radians. And that means, if you want to work out what one radian is, well, one radian is equal to 360 degrees divided by 2 pi, so that is 57.30 degrees, okay? Now, there's a definition of the radian, okay? So, the actual definition of the radian is the angle subtended, so it's the angle subtended um, at the center of a circle by an arc whoops, equal in length to the radius. Okay, so if you think about, let's get rid of that, let's just have a, just draw a circle. So if you think about a circle like this, okay, here's your radius r, okay, this thing's going to move through a certain distance s there. So that's the arc through which it's moved. This is r, and this is the angle subtended theta. Okay, so there's your radius. That's the arc length, and that's the angle subtended theta. The ang subtended just means the angle uh, swept out or that the object uh, moves through. Okay, so radians, 360 degrees, 2 pi radians. That means that if you've got uh, 180 degrees, that would be equal to pi 
radians and so on. Okay. Now, talking about this arc length, the, arc, the formula for the arc length is equal to this. Well, we know that the circumference of this circle is equal to 2 pi r. Okay. So if you want to work out the arc length, and the arc length s, which is the length of a section of this circle, it's, it's, a, it's a portion of the circumference passed through by the object that's moving in a circle. Okay, so we know when an object goes in a circle, if it goes right around, all the way around this circle like this, okay, we know that that distance is 2 pi r, it's the circumference, right? But if it's passing through just a portion of this circumference here, okay, so there's your radius, uh, obviously it's going to pass through a fraction of 360 degrees. When it goes all the way around the circle, it passes through 360 degrees to cover this distance, the circumference 2 pi r. But s, which is this distance here, okay, it's a portion of the circumference, that s is going to equal um, the fraction of the total um, angle of the circle pass through, okay, so the fraction of 360 degrees multiplied by the entire circumference, okay. So the arc length formula is theta, the angle passed through, divided by 360 degrees, multiplied by the circumference. It's basically the fraction of the circumference passed through, bearing in mind that the entire circumference occurs over 360 degrees, okay. That's the arc length formula when you're using an angle in degrees. Now, if we use the angle instead in radians, here's where it becomes useful. We know that um, it's going to be the fraction of the total angle passed through multiplied by the circumference. The fraction of the angle here is now going to be theta over 2 pi rather than over 360 degrees because 2 pi is the entire angle passed through when you go through the circumference 2 pi r. And what you'll notice now is you can cancel those out and the equation becomes s equals theta r. Okay, so that's the arc length formula. Okay, where theta equals the angle in radians. Okay, now from that the definition of radians comes because the angle theta passed through in radians is equal to s over r, okay, s over r. So one radian, okay, one radian is going to be equal to s divided by r, where s and r must be equal to one another because s divided by r, in order to make one, these two must be the same. So this is the angle subtended at the centre of a circle by an arc equaling length to the radius. Okay, so that's where all that comes from. Right, next thing then. Let's move on a little bit here. So the next thing to say is this. We've talked about the um, arc length formula. Here's our circle. Okay, and the object going through circular motion has got a radius, the circle of radius r. Uh, we know that the object is travelling around with a certain angular velocity, okay? So the angular velocity omega is equal to the change in angle divided by the change in time, okay? Or the now, now, if the object is going around with a constant velocity, we can just write omega equals basically theta over t, okay? Now, if, if, if we've got a constant velocity. Now, that angle theta is going to be equal to 2 pi if the time is equal to the time period. Okay, so in the time period t, it should be clear that the angle subtended is equal to 2 pi. Okay, because in a, an entire time period is the time taken to do an, a, a complete circle and that angle is going to be 2 pi. So this equation can be written as 2 pi over t. The angular velocity is 2 pi over t. It's the angle per second, the angle pass through per second. 
Okay, and the unit of omega, it's the angular velocity. Now at A level, we basically treat this as a scalar, despite the fact that it's a vector. The angular velocity is measured in radians per second. Okay, it's the number of radians passed through per second. So in an entire time period, the number of radians is 2 pi. So omega equals 2 pi over t. Now, because t is equal to, uh, well, 1 over t is equal to the frequency, we can also write omega as 2 pi f. Okay, same thing. All of these are the equation for omega angular velocity with the unit radians per second. Okay, now there's another thing that I talked about already, and that is the velocity. So at this particular point, the velocity, now the velocity of the object, the velocity of the object is a um, is always directed along a tangent to that particular point on the circle where the object is residing at that point in time. So the velocity, okay, the linear velocity, we could call it, whoops, V is equal to, the distance divided by the time, if you think about it. So the distance divided by the time. The distance divided by the time. So the distance travelled when this thing goes around the circle is 2 pi r. And the time taken to go once around the circle is t, the time period. So the linear velocity is equal to 2 pi r over the time period. Okay, Or just distance travelled divided by time. Okay, That's the linear velocity and it's always directed along a tangent to the circle at that particular point. Okay so that brings us on now then to this little idea here. So let's say we've got a circle here okay and you can see that the, this let's say this is a string and it's going around in a circle okay and you've got and we pick different points along this string so it's swinging around in a circle, this piece of string here, There's a, let's say there's a stone on the end of it and you're swinging it around in a circle, okay? And we're looking at these three different points. So uh, let's say A, B and C, okay? Now, if this thing is being swung around on a piece of string, okay, then those points along that piece of string all have the same angular velocity. So omega... A is equal to omega B, which is equal to omega C. They're all the same, okay? The angular velocity must be the same because they, all of those points must take the same time to go right around the circle. Therefore, they must be going through the same angle per second. But what about the linear velocity of C compared to the linear velocity of B compared to the linear velocity of A? Well, if you think about it, all of these points are taking this on the on the string are taking the same time to go right around the circle but c is traveling through a bigger distance than a or b so the linear velocity of uh, at part at c is greater than the linear velocity of b which is greater than the linear velocity at a a has the lowest linear velocity because although it's going around at the same angular velocity as c it's traveling through a smaller distance so the distance traveled in the time period is less okay basically what we're saying here is that the um, velocity the linear velocity of an object is equal to 2 pi r over t now t is a constant if this is traveling at a constant velocity um, or a constant angular velocity you could say so v is basically proportional to r okay now that brings us on to the final thing here which is this Omega is equal to 2 pi over t, and v is equal to 2 pi r over t. Now what you notice here is uh, 2 pi over t is omega, so v can also be written as omega r. Okay, and that's a really important relationship. That's the linear velocity, the angular velocity, and the radius. So the velocity of the linear velocity of an object in, um, on a, that's going around in a circle is proportional to the radius. Okay, The further the object is from the centre of the circle, the greater its linear velocity.